Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I am back with another gardening video. So today we are doing some garden maintenance as well as a few plantings. So you can see I have my Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. I planted these about 20 days ago and they are doing beautifully. And I only planted a few of them because they get huge. If they are in a spot they like, they can get three to four feet wide. I mean, so it will really fill in this whole section, um, which is exactly what I want. But I've noticed over the last 20 days that while I have other pink plants down on that side of the garden, this side of the garden is lacking pink. I do have plenty of pink gladiolus or iris in the back, and I will be able to enjoy those when they bloom. But clouds only bloom for a couple weeks of the summer. Um, even if you succession plant them, which I've done, they're not going to be a continuous bloomer. And so I just needed a little more pink on this side to tie in that color scheme. So I ran out and I got some pink pintas. I planted them out and I placed them out here, not planted them out here yesterday. So they're getting a little hot. It rained last night, so I thought they were fine, but they're looking droopy. Need to get those in the ground. Last year I planted pink salvia all the way around these crepe myrtles, but the, the salvia, while it self seeds, it just, it really didn't come back too much this year. I probably have, like there's one back there. There's I think three back actually in the pea gravel. And so I'm going to transplant those around the bigger tree because I have more room down there. But these pintas get about 10 inches wide. So they should really be more than enough right here and then let me take you down there. So when we come along, these roses were supposed to be pink. So they were supposed to be like my biggest pop of pink on this side. But as you can see, the second year, they are just little more red than pink. And they're not, I mean, they're still beautiful. I still love them. They're knockout roses. Um, and I love how they perform, but I probably would put something different in here if I was doing this again. So my plan is once these snapdragons go out for the season in another month or two, I will replace them with some of all these little, let's see if we can't find one, these baby um, vincas that are all throughout here and they will be pink. So that will be a nice pop of pink. And then I was planning to put pink vinca all around the birdbath like I did last year as well. But then I started thinking that's going to be vinca, 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 like all in one spot. So I went ahead, I got five more of the bubblegum pink and I planted them yesterday. I didn't do it on camera because I just wanted to get them in the ground before the rain came. And then you can see over here, these ones are much happier. Do, do, do. I put three pentas, it's a little close, there we go. I put one, two, three pentas around this tree and you can see how much more space I have around this tree. So I think the few salvia I have, I'm gonna put in between the pentas and then this will just be a mass of pink that comes up. Ah, cinnamon. And that will add to the pink on this side. So we're gonna get those pentas planted. We are also then going to change, we're going to move this bubblegum and this lobelia. We're gonna swap them so that I have more pink down there and not a continuous pink swoop here. And I think that will be better. So we're gonna switch those. And then we do have some deadheading to do, the iris, these iris, they all need deadheaded. Um, some of the snapdragons need deadheaded. I could go through and do that now, or I could wait a few more days till all of these blooms drop and then deadhead them all. And then they will probably flush with blooms one more time before the season is over. It is hard to say with how hot it gets here how so quickly, but things are coming in nicely and I'm not sure if this is a lamb's ear, but it looks like a foxglove. I planted a bunch of foxglove seeds. You can see a tag right back here. 
everywhere and I'm not seeing any foxgloves where I planted them but to me that looks like foxglove foliage um so cross your fingers even if it's in the wrong spot like I'll take it I'll take it and then these are actually all little zinnias that reseeded because I had a zinnia plant right here so once they get big enough they will be transplanted somewhere else but we're not doing that today we're going to start with these pintas because they look so sad and then we will move on but cinnamon, it's not usually off leash, but we're trying it today because she's usually, she's been very clingy lately. Cinnamon, come on, baby girl. If you can't stay with me, you have to go back on your leash. Let's get back to work. Okay, so before we get started too hard, I'm gonna go ahead and lift this salvia baby out and we'll plant it around the other tree so it doesn't get trampled. Ooh, it has some good roots. I think this is one that must have come back from last year. There we go. Right. Let's get in here. And I do have a few seeds planted in here, so I just have to be careful. I'm going to mess that up. Watch. There's my soaker hose, so we're going to watch that as well. There's our spot. X marks the spot. Got some osmocote. Take and bake that, baby. Whew. This guy These guys will get some good water. I'm not planting these guys too, too much around this tree, but you know, I am trying as much as possible not to hurt the roots of this crepe myrtle. So I want him to live too. Way more than I want these pentas to live, that's for sure. I like them, but they're way less important than my tree. All right, so now I'm just gonna rough up the bottom because there's quite a bit of dirt on the bottom of these that you can kind of get off. I normally wouldn't worry about that, but again, since I'm trying not to dig these holes too big, that is helpful if I can make the root balls as small as possible without hurting them. Ooh. That one's good. Pick it with yes. Ooh, and tree ones. actually get 14 wide, 10 high, 14 tall. I read it the opposite. So I think it should be 
even better around this tree. We'll fill in these gaps nicely. So these are the old salvia that didn't come back. And the salvia um, doesn't really come back. It's not like I was expecting it to, but they are heavy cedars. Um, if you watched my new garden bed video over on the tree down there, I must have planted 20 little salvias that had receded from my little garden bed over there. So they definitely receded better over there than they did over here, which is not a bad thing. And if I wasn't using them all over there, I'd uh, pop some over here. But if these do well, they are, they're supposed to be perennials. Now, pentas don't always come back, even if they are perennial. They really like warm temperatures. So if you get a lot of freezes, they're just not going to love that and come back. But here in good old Alabama, we don't get that cold. We don't get that cold. So I am hoping that they will come back for us here. And I will not have to disturb the roots of this tree every year. All right. And hopefully I didn't hurt this puppy that I planted. Let's get them watered in. Well, first... This around to help hide that yucky sand. The only thing I don't love about composting is it looks great when it's done, but then every time I plant something new, it's very obvious for at least a couple days. Definitely getting these jeans dirty. It's okay, I've got a washing machine. two and then we might um, hit them with the water again but for now let's let's go down the way I'm gonna see how many little salvias I can lift to put around that tree okay y'all so we've got some little baby salvia and you're going to put one of them right here these ones are much smaller with much smaller roots one i think right here would be good we'll come down in there oh there's lots of ants right here won't hurt anything. All right. So then we've got one more spot over here. And I've got one more actually rather large salvia that I'm going to put here. So make a good spot for it. And then we'll water these guys in. Quite sure how big those roots are gonna be. These pintas in the shade are doing good, but that one up front looks like he needs some more water too. Okay, so we've 
Cinnamon, come here. No, we don't need that. No, ma'am. Hey. Okay, so here's this guy. He's pretty big. He has quite a few more roots than the others. Stick them in here. Have them back over with the dirt. When I do this, I am trying not to mess up where I have seeds as much as possible. There we go. Let's water those guys. Yeah. on mist since those savia babies are very little. I want to be very gentle not to dislodge their, their new roots. Their old roots in their new spot. Cinnamon, that's enough. <laughs> when you're starting seeds, even direct sowing them, you want to keep them moist. So I'm just kind of, whenever I have the hose out here, I just kind of hit anything that, that might be a seed that I've planted. All right. We're gonna go ahead, I think we're gonna clip this branch. Let me get my pruners and then we're gonna deadhead these iris. So I don't worry too much about the crepe myrtles when they're this little. This is only this guy's second year. But I do want it to be a tree and not a bush. So I did go in on that tree over there and I clipped off a bunch of those lower branches that really make it look like a bush. I'm not gonna worry about these because hopefully they will be up in the tree canopy more next year. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up some of these dead ones from last year since I never got in here to do it earlier. Now the iris, I think are pretty much bloomed out and you can come in and deadhead these kind of as they're blooming, but I'm still, I'm still an iris newbie and I didn't want to actually clip something off that I shouldn't. So you're just going to come down, see this is a spent bloom, come down to the base and you're just going to cut it right at the base here. So we want to leave 
the foliage for as long as possible until it starts dying back and turning brown. Because that is what's going to give the bulbs the um, energy they need to make blooms for next year. We definitely want blooms for next year. So, yeah. just tidies up the plant. So that the, the foliage still looks great in your garden. And these are actually glads. So these are iris, those are iris. These are glads. These are bearded iris. These are smaller iris. I'll put a picture of them from last last tour I did where they were beautiful. year and they weren't what mine like broke right here I don't know if you can see that so I really have to get everything down in here to use these Ruby. cinnamon come back here she's going up by the car like let's go on a trip mama we're not going anywhere in the car Uh, she's sitting in the shade up there. It is very hot out here. I actually just had to go take a break inside because when I went to check that my camera was still recording, it said that my phone was too hot and I had to wait for it to cool down before I resumed using it, which I had never heard of before. So, whew, no wonder everything in my garden is so hot today. It was a hot day. Still got plenty of iris blooming, so I just don't want to cut off anything that is a bud, not a spent bud. But I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that patini with that abularia, and then we've got some violas still to uh, to deadhead. I really, I don't know. I'm not wasn't doing much out here today, so I don't want to worry about putting on my leggings but i love wearing my leggings to garden because they have deep pockets on the side that are perfect for my shovel and my pruner and they just make it like a little apron without being a little apron so I miss them when i'm not wearing them all right clean up and then move those last two plates Last but not least, we're going to switch this petunia and this, I believe it's a lobularia, but I'll put the name on the screen if that's wrong. That way we have just a little bit more. I want the pink more spread out over this garden bed. So I want it down there just a smidge more. Um, like I said, I wasn't planning to put petunias around this bird bath when I planted this here. And I hate to move things once they're established. But like I said, these guys have only been in the ground for about 20 days. so. They should be, you know, they're in, but they're not in. They're not rooted perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and still swap them. Ooh. 
So let's go ahead and get them switched real quick. Yes. You can see the shade is moving up. It should be shady up here in less than an hour and we'll water them real good. So we should be okay. Make sure you get fairly wide, but again, these guys have only been in the ground for 20 days, so. They really should spread too far by now. They really should still be in their factory can kind of settings. Left this guy with my little shovel because he was in an even smaller can. much smaller of a can this one was in. I'm going to plant him right here. actually want him like Little blue flowers. Sorry, I moved you. You'll be okay. Grow, guys, grow. Be happy. Be free. little clams. Let's water them. It's just enough of a slope. I feel like you're falling over.
guys a day or two to bounce back. And uh, they should look just fine. But I think that's all we have to do out here. I'm going to, I guess I'll show you just a brief overview of everything we did, although everything looks slightly drowned right now until it gets established. And then I have one more project up on the porch. Some of my viola is whew, going to seed because I did not know you were supposed to deadhead them to keep them blooming. So I am going through and snipping off all the deadheads, all the seed pods, so that, that those violas will keep blooming at least for another month or two. Um, we'll probably have to come out, like I said, in another couple of days once the rest of these snapdragons have lost their blooms. We'll give all those a haircut so they will flush back better, bigger and better with their last. They might have one, they might have two more blooms of the season. It's hard to say down here, we're in an AV. It gets really, really, really hot. And so it's really not until the heat of the summer, like July, that they just can't make it anymore. And so it is going to be May soon in the next week. So we should have really another month or two to enjoy the snapdragon. So I'm hoping two more blooms, but at least at least one more flush of blooms. Um, and I planted these snapdragons late. I planted them right around the first of April. I think a little bit before that. Um, they were the first thing. No, it was mid March. It, they were the first things I planted in here. I planted plan to plant seeds. And then I realized that in our temperatures, you really need to plant snapdragon seeds in the fall. Like I needed to have started them in August and planted them in the garden in November. And then supposedly they will flush with blooms all winter into spring around here, off and on, depending on how cold we are. So I saved my seeds, I'm going to do that next year. And I just popped these guys in. They were on the clearance rack at our local um, Home Depot because they were out of season. So I got three, four, 10 packs and I popped them in. And these guys are supposed to get like two feet tall. They will not do that from when I planted them, but that's okay. I didn't want two foot tall ones. I wanted maybe foot tall ones at the most. So. They should grow a little bit more. And then, like I said, you're going to plant those Binka babies that are coming up everywhere in among them so that as the snapdragons are petering out for the season, the Vincas will just be coming into their own and will take over. So that's enough walking and talking. Let me grab y'all, pick this all up. I'm going to go ahead and leave the hose here because I'm probably going to come back out and rewater some of these things at least one more time before the heat of the day is over. We get really hot around here. So when, you, when you're planting them all the day, I come out and make sure they have lots to drink. When in doubt, water everything a bunch, but not too much. You go over water. I don't know how that works. I don't know anything. Most of my advice is stuff my mom tells me. And then I tell y'all. All right, so I did go ahead. I deadheaded all of these bearded iris that have already bloomed. You can see we do still have a couple white ones blooming and there's still buds on plenty of these. So we have more coming up little transplanted petunia and our little lobularia. Hopefully that's right. But you can see how that'll give us a little break from the pink. So we'll have lamb's ear, lobularia, lamb's ear, vinca, and then the petunia. We've got a verbena and another lamb's ear all spread throughout here. So then here's where we put our other petunias and pintas yesterday, as well as the new little salvia babies. And the salvia are very similar color to the pinta and the bubble gum. So hopefully that'll just be a whole riot of pink around that tree. Then we deadheaded our tall flag iris there. Dun, dun, dun. I still love this little fairy. And we planted these 
pinta around this tree. So they are already starting to pop up just a little bit, but they will look better even tomorrow. So up here on the porch is our last project. You can see we have cinnamon set up. We have a bed for her just in case she wanted one, but it's a little hot for a fluffy bed, water and food. So she's just hanging out on the porch, huh, baby? Where it's cool in the shade. So here's our viola. So I have been deadheading them a bunch. So you can see this is a spent flower. And if we don't want it to turn into a seed pod, we have to get rid of it so that it can flush back with new blooms. So you can see I deadheaded all of this yesterday and it is already putting out new buds where there will be violas coming up. These pink snapdragons, beautiful. They've got lots more buds on them. So I'm just gonna go through here. I'm gonna pinch off anything that looks done. And then, so this is an open seed pod. So right here, these are our flowers that died. Here's a, a seed pod. So you can see what it looks like. It's formed a seed pod. And then for these, the seed pod has already opened and scattered all that seed. So technically, if you want to collect the seed, you should wait until just after these have opened and then collect the open ones. I have found, cause they're, they're not mature enough when they're in the, in the bud like that. I have found that if you, if you wait and you just pick the buds and you put them somewhere where they can dry out, they do open on their own and then you can get the seeds out of them. Now, I have not been able to find anyone to tell me if that means those seeds are then viable. I'm gonna try it, cause what do I have to lose, you know? But essentially, I've already done this side of the pot. I'm just gonna come in over here and try to get this side of the pot. So you can see there's way more open ones over here. And you can use pruning shears. I've got some little pointed snips um, that work great for this. But I lent them to my mom. See, there's a bunch down there that need to come off. And now I don't know where she put them, but I'm just going to work on this real quick. And then that's our last project of the day. Just going to come in here, come all the way down, follow the stem. And right where it meets the plant, just pinch it off. And if I find any that dead earlier that I didn't pinch off at the base. I try to get those two. I don't want them in there. Once you get the bulk of it done, since I haven't been doing this, you can kind of, you know, just do it occasionally when you see them and not need to come out and make a whole afternoon of it. But I spent quite a while out here yesterday working on it. There's still more. And of course I could just come in and give this whole, whole plant a haircut, but I don't really want to lose all the pretty growth. I just want it to bloom. So while I am taking off the seed pods that have already opened, mainly we are looking for ones that haven't opened because the plant, the plant is trying to make seeds. Like that's the plant's goal. And so all these seed pods are telling the plants like, 
Yay, we did it. We made seeds. I take the seed pods off. Then the plant is like, oh, crap. We need more seed pods. All of ours are gone. And what that means is it puts out new blooms because the blooms become the seeds. So they're essentially telling the plant, hey, make more blooms. Every time we take a dead flower or a seed pod off. That does not just go for violas. That goes for all flowers, really. There are some that doesn't, but... Most flowers, if you let them go to seed, they will stop blooming. So regular deadheading is important. I've never grown violas though, so I didn't ever, didn't think about it. Until I started seeing all these little seed pods and I was like, um, I should not be doing that yet. used to my super tunias that are self-gleaning. It's Vista bubblegum. They would never do me like this. All right, so here's one with some seeds still in it that where the seed pod has opened. So if you're collecting the seeds, you want to look for them right after they've opened and you can see all those pretty brown seeds in there. I'm not going to get it perfect, but I think we're getting a lot of them. We are going to go ahead and call that good for the day. We got quite a bit done. There's always more gardening projects to be had in the garden, but this is one of my favorite planters. Um, see like this little guy, he needs to come out. It was a verbena that I thought was gonna come back, but he is not. So we just need to take him out, let him fill in like this fern. He is actually filling in. And uh, we will leave that as a project for another day. Today, we are done. So I will see you in the next video. If you like these kind of gardening maintenance videos where I just do a whole bunch of stuff, let me know. Bye.